All right, thank you for staying with us. The agricultural sector in Nigeria has faced numerous challenges over the years, including inadequate funding poor infrastructure and limited access to markets. The 2024 budget signals a turning point in the government's commitment to addressing these issues. With a substantial allocation of funds, the federal government plans to implement key interventions that will reinvigorate the sector and propel it towards sustainable growth and uh, development. I'm being joined by a researcher and agribusiness economist, Dr. Matthew Ojo, who joins me from the United Kingdom. Dr. Ojo, thank you so much. It's good to see you in 2024. How's it going? And how's the weather? Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. <laughs> and uh, good afternoon, Tolu. It's, it's nice to be, to be on your program in this new year. It's going on well, and how are you doing? <laughs> All right, then. I want to start with this issue around budgeting for the agricultural sector. Now, as contained in the 2024 budget, about $110.25 billion is what was earmarked for uh, the ministry. This is less than 1% of the entire budget. Uh, let me ask you, what do you make of this? Well, I, first of all, I, I think uh, we, we need to look at the, the picture holistically. Uh, because before this present administration came in, if you look at from 2016 up to 2023, under the Buhari-led administration, apart from 2017, when we had uh, the, the proportion of the budget to the agricultural sector compared to the national budget was around 2.23. The highest we had was in 2019, when we had 3.69% of the entire budget. Apart from those two years, the percentage of the national budget that goes to the agricultural sector has been below 2%. And that has been very disturbing over the years. Because when you look at government comes out to say, we want to develop the agricultural sector. We want to diversify the economy. We want to pull down or drag down unemployment rate through the agricultural sector. And then you look at the amount that goes into the sector able to fulfill what they come out to tell the entire nation they want to do, there is a mismatch. And unfortunately, that mismatch is being carried on also by this administration, because that's what we've seen in the allocation. The budget for agriculture for last year was abysmally low, because I think it stood around 1.1%. And now we have, if you look at the entire budget, 362.9 billion to the agricultural sector, but that's about 1.32% of the entire budget. So the, 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 the mismatch for me is, is the problem. And this is a government that just a few months ago, July to be precise, you know, did something that other government, our administration had not done by coming out to say, look, we want to declare a national emergency as it concerns food security. Beautiful. And if you remember when, when, when you, you asked me, I said, it's okay to declare, but another thing to see the actions that will follow up to the declaration. So for you to have declared a state of uh, uh, emergency concerning food, and for you to now allocate just 1.32% to agriculture, there is a mismatch, and you know it doesn't add up for me. Okay, if you look at the entire budget sectorally, you have security and defense. You know, giving you are giving security and defense about 12% of the entire budget, and then you have education 7.9. That's that's very commendable. You have health around 5%. For me. What we need to look at is, if you fund agriculture and you provide food for people, half of the insecurity problems will be solved. Because you see, when people are hungry and they don't have means to get something to eat, then they threaten others to be able to take care of themselves. I, I think I watched a, a, a video online. There was this young man that was, they, they were interviewing him and he was saying the government should help us and do something. What was he saying? He said they are hungry. And he, he, he started with an appeal and ended up ended it with, with, with a threat. If government doesn't do something, you will go and pick a gun and, and anything can happen. So if you look at such, you will understand that rather than put so much into security and defense, you feed the people. That is the real security in itself. When the people are fed, this other whatever we are having in terms of bandage and kidnapping, you will see the effect also you know, in that set area. So I think 
the government has not matched up, all right, what they said with action. Looking at this budget, and uh, funny enough, the budget is to renew hope. For me, this has only renewed my concern and renewed fears whether this administration is really serious when it comes to ensuring food security. And this has nothing to do whether, you know, being partisan or not. I'm not a politician. The figures are there. So 1.32% is low. Now, in 2014, the, you know, the African continent came together and that, uh, to say, look, we want to commit up to 10% of our national budget to agriculture. And that was what is referred to as a valuable information. Now, in, in, there was a report that I read released in 2020. The average agricultural budget for the for, you know, for the entire continent stands around 4.1 percent when you compare the uh, budget to agriculture to the national budget. So Nigeria has not even been able to get up to four percent. We are we are operating below the average percentage of uh, agricultural budget in the entire Africa. So why are we concerned? Because Many other African countries have not even been able to meet up to the 10, I mean, 10 percent uh, allocation to the agricultural sector. So why, why, why do the noise about Nigeria? Others are not doing it. But here is the problem with Nigeria: Nigeria's population cannot be compared with other countries' population. Let me put it in context: the entire West African um, countries that we have, put all of them together, the population is around 446 million. Nigeria's population is half of that. Kenya is just a quarter of Nigeria's population. Egypt is about half of Nigeria's population. It, the same thing with Ethiopia. So if you don't look at the issue of food and take it seriously, if those countries even are allocating about 4% of their national budget to agriculture, it can still be excused. But for a country as huge as Nigeria, over 220 million in terms of population, we need to do beyond 1.32%, for goodness sake. So I, I, I'm really, really stopped because if you don't address food issues by pumping enough resources, there is going to be a deficit in, in, in the sense that people will be hungry, food prices will still, will still be high. I think the figure of, figures for, for, for December you just mentioned has been released. And I can see that food inf inflation is almost at almost 34%. About 33 30 point percent something percent. In, 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 in 2022 December. So this, these are the things I, I, I look at. Guari administration did not declare state of emergency as a concern. This administration did well by declaring it. Unfortunately, what they have allocated to agriculture does not show that they want to carry out actions that will reduce food security. For me, it's, it's not a renewed hope at all. It's rather renewed fears. At all. Interesting start. Uh, and I must say, a nice breakdown there, Doc. You know, looking at what's been happening before now. But I would also want to ask you, uh, maybe because government is uh, having other kind of interventions now to support the agricultural space, maybe that's why this is happening. We are expected to uh, uh, work on like 500,000 hectares of land to cultivate maize, uh, rice, millet, and some staple crops like that. So maybe government is trying to balance up from all sides because that's also an investment, one way or the other. Yes, it, it is. It is. Uh, if, if you want me to tell that lie, it is an investment. You see, we we I I like the fact that they they are doing something, but it's going to cost money, isn't it? So if you have enough money pumped into the agricultural sector, rather than 500,000 500, hectares, maybe it will be 1 million hectares. This is not a country like the Republic of Togo. It's huge in terms of So after you, you cultivate 500,000 uh, hectares, then what? Then the food prices will come down? Come on, let's, let's not deceive ourselves. I've analyzed on your program, and when you talk about food security, the production aspect of it is just one part, right? It's just, it's just one part. Apart from production, you need to look at other factors that add up and contribute to food inflation or food insecurity. So when you produce enough and you can't get to those who want to consume it, it's almost like you haven't done anything. That is not to say that the government is not doing anything. We are just saying that for a government that came out to declare a national emergency as a this is not enough. 
See, nobody is saying that the first budget that will come from this administration will go straight to 10%. That would be unreal. I've analyzed it also on your program. You, you have a, a well-planned out you know, approach to move Nigeria above this current. Every year you come up with a budget for agriculture that is sub 2% and you want changes. I mean, we, we, I think we are joking as a nation. So for my concern is, look at what is on the ground. The first year can be 3 point something. Percent. The next year can be 5%. And subsequently, before the administration will end his tenure, you would have moved the percentage of uh, agricultural budget from what it is now to something around five or six percent, and maybe subsequent administration can move it closer to one percent. Then we can start start talking. However, however, let me say this: I know I, I read somewhere where someone said, "How can you be pumping money into a leaking sector?" Partly, I I I agree with that argument that the agricultural sector to is a leaking sector. That, and that was why I harped on over and over again that this administration can do something different from the other ones. Why? I wanted this administration to come in and do a, 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 a holistic look at that sector and change some things, move some things around. You can't continue to build on this faulty structure. That's one argument. The second one is that you are not even giving the sector enough for a sustainable. Okay, 369 billion or 362 uh, billion. And then you went ahead and created another agency, okay, National Agricultural Development Fund, and 102 billion is going to that. So you 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 just look, if you sit down, look at the number of parastatals under the, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, you you'll be surprised. So my 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 take is this: a government that has shown from onset that is concerned about the hunger situation of the country should not be allocating one point. 32% of the national budget to agriculture. Defense is important. Insecurity issue is, an, is, is important. They should look at that. But however, we did a research when I was with Lagos Singapore, uh, when I was heading research at Lagos Chamber of Commerce. And we looked at insecurity in Nigeria. And what we found out first of all was this there is a correlation between unemployment and insecurity. Right? The example of the young man I gave you says it all. When you have unemployment rising, people take to other means just to get income. But the, the ultimate driving force behind this is hunger. Who want to feed? So Nigeria should show the other African countries the way. I don't want to talk about uh, Morocco, compare agriculture in Morocco to Nigeria. I don't want to compare the agriculture in Kenya to Nigeria. That, because usually I look at so many dynamics, I just try to like, let's not do that one on one thing. Because it, Certain things are not exactly the same. However, we can take a leave or borrow a leave from such countries. So we, we, my hope, my hope would be that maybe the. I mean, the vice president is an agricultural economist. So I think things need to be looked at properly. If this government wants Nigeria happy with it, to address the issue with head on, and it starts the allocation, the sector restructuring that sector so that you have a different foundation from what you've always had that has not yielded anything, you know, encouraging, something new, something different. The issue on, of data is also something that many have talked about to help government shape up interventions that would help address issues facing Nigeria's agricultural sector. Uh, like you said, you've done a lot of research around Nigeria's agricultural space and all of that. What sort of data do we have that can help government know that, okay, even if it's not 100% perfect, let's be sure that these are the number of fish farmers we have, number of poultry farmers we have. All of this will help government when they're trying to institute programs or initiatives that will help agriculture uh, practitioners. If you want to hear the truth concerning data, it's so encouraging. Because if, if, you, if you're conducting a research and you want to get data that's reliable from the Ministry of Agriculture, you, you meet brick walls. And I'm, I'm not just saying a brick wall, you meet brick walls. Because the, it's not just there. Investment in data gathering has to be stepped up in that sense. And this is part of why I said, look at the whole structure and rejig it, okay? And change some things around. 
and let it be different. See, reports have it that by 2050, 80% of the world population will live in the urban area. Have we positioned the Nigerian agricultural sector to look at that over time? We still produce in the rural areas, fine. Are we thinking about urban agriculture? If we're thinking about urban agriculture, we need data. We need all, the, all those things that will make it easier for us to be able to make progress. So when you don't have enough money for the sector in the first place, how do you pay for data gathering? It's expensive, not cheap. Because data gives you what you need to make decisions. And if you don't have the correct data, how do you take decisions? Because I've heard people talk about, some people used to check on online, they say, is this statistics that will chop? The question is, if you don't have what to chop, you eventually chop, need statistics. Because everything is planned based on information that data gives us. And if we don't work with that, we can't just do things as if we are wishing there will be changes. There won't be changes. So how do we go ahead from here? From here? What we can do is find this budget has been released. We have a low percentage. Going forward, the government should take time. The next few months leading to the next budget, rearrange things in the agricultural sector. That is critical. Once it is done, then pump in a higher percentage in the agricultural sector. Then you will see certain changes even in the insecurity area because that also will come down. People can eat and access food easily. They can go to their farms. And if they are not in the rural areas, they can farm in the urban centers. That will change the landscape. And going forward, we we'll see this. Then the 500,000 hectares that they are trying to cultivate will add on to something. Maybe next year can go to 1 million. That is the way I think can take advantage of that declaration made by the government and put in actions that will change generally. Hmm. Really uh, getting so, so deep now. Uh, let's talk a bit uh, as we almost wrap up this segment of the show about the uh, dry season farming, which many used to say that, you know, farming kind of seasonal, but many say that if we want to address food insecurity, we must move on and farm during uh, all season farming. So what do you make of that? Government is instituting that uh, at the moment, uh, a comprehensive one for wheat, dry season farming. Uh, what positives do you see in this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's encouraging. But, but what I'm seeing surprised is, is about is that we're still talking about dry season farming. We should, have, we should be talking about, like you mentioned, all season farming, all right? See, and dry season farming is basically providing irrigation facilities for people to farm during the dry season. And reports, you know, studies have shown that about 1% or even less than half, or 1% of the arable land in Nigeria is irrigated. So that is one thing we need to look at. By now, we shouldn't be talking about rainy season or dry season. It should just be all season. It's a good move for us. But can we lay a foundation such that? Gradually increase the percentage of arable land that is under irrigation in the country. Then you can have production all year round. That would be interesting. But you see the way our politicians do every year they come and say they are launching dry season farming. That doesn't make sense anymore. The way technology is going and the way agriculture is going globally, the, the, the nations have gone beyond seasonal farming. But that's still the pain of agricultural development in Africa, I understand. However, Nigeria should lead the way because we can lead the way. And we have what it takes to do. I must thank you so much, Dr. Matthew Ojo, for your time joining us from the United Kingdom. He's a researcher and an agribusiness economist. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, we'll keep talking. We know that government will listen and, of course, take points, key points from all your contributions. Let's move to talk markets.